What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining my channel. Today we're going to be talking about phrases that people who have been diagnosed with depression hate to hear. And no, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. If you said these phrases, we're all human. At times we can be a little ins insensitive. It doesn't mean we meant to be hurtful or we meant any ill will by it. So before I begin, do you have anxiety? Do you have panic attacks? Do you have depression, social anxiety, all of the above? Well, if you do, then please go ahead and subscribe to this channel, get your reassurance, get your daily dose of reassurance, turn that notification bell on. Every single time I upload a video, you'll be notified straight to your phone. And if you haven't already, guys, please like this video. It helps this trend channel out tremendously. And I appreciate every single view and every single like that I get on this video. Go ahead and jump right into it. So after talking to people that are actually depressed who have been diagnosed with depression, We've talked, we talked about some phrases that we commonly hear and aren't really reassuring and they can be a little insensitive, but I know that most people genuinely mean to be insensitive. They don't mean to say something that could cause the person um, even more anxiety or more depressed, more depressed feelings. So the first phrase I'm going to begin with is cheer up. Um, just simply cheer up and cheer up is just kind of like a smack in the face Because somebody with depression they want to be happy. They want to cheer up. They want to be in a great mood They just can't you know, you would never tell somebody with Tourette's to just stop doing what their tics are um, It's the same thing right here You cannot expect somebody just to cheer up because you say the words cheer up And I think this one really bothers people that have been diagnosed with depression the most because you're telling them something that they cannot do and something they would probably give the world um, to experience. They would give the world to experience happiness and get out of this hole that they're in, but they just can't. It's a disease. Now for somebody that doesn't have depression, the term cheer up is just simply harmless. With somebody that does suffer through depressed episodes and stuff like that, um, it's a little more, you know, personal because they definitely want to be more happy. They just, like, they can't. It's a disease. So the next phrase I would like to talk about is you're too this or you're too that. You're too pretty. You're too young. You're too, you have a great personality, so you shouldn't be sad. You're too pretty, so you shouldn't be sad. You're too outgoing, so you shouldn't be sad. That has nothing to do with anything. Depression doesn't discriminate. If it hits you, it hits you hard and it hits you fast and it can be overwhelming. If you think that money, looks, personality can change how happy a person is in their life, why do celebrities commit suicide? You know, these people have literally the whole world, but the depression can be so terrifying and such a traumatic experience that people take their own lives. And it's a very, very serious thing when you see these people who have it all. You know, but do they really? Are they really happy? And you'll never know that. A lot of people with depression, they sit in silence. You know, they don't like to express their emotions. They don't like being vulnerable. They don't like opening up to people. So just because you're young, pretty, wealthy, uh, have a great personality, it does not discriminate. It can come after you. It will come after anybody. So to say that, well, you're too this or that to be, to be this sad is just simply uh, ignorant, not to be rude phrase would be to pray about it. If the person is spiritual, this can be really sensitive because odds are they've prayed about it before. If they believe in God, they probably ask God, why is this happen happening to them? Why do they feel all these emotions? Why do they feel not, get not like getting out of bed? Why do they feel like they're in a hole? Why do they feel trapped? Why do they feel numb? Why do they feel exhausted all the time? A prayer is definitely not a bad thing if you, if you believe in that type of stuff. And personally, I do. I think it's a good thing. On the other hand, it can be kind of insensitive and like you're not really listening to the person's problems. You're just kind of brushing off. Okay, just pray about it. Everything's going to go away. It doesn't go away. So I suggest that you be there a little bit more. Yes, advise them to pray about it um, if you feel like it. But, you know, don't just leave off on it. This one isn't necessarily a phrase, but this is something that I find troubling, a lot of people find troubling, is that they'll use depression, the word depressed, so loosely, like it's just a, a term that you can just throw out there. Now, of course, when somebody who actually has depression hears somebody use the word depressed, it can be 
very, very cringy. Like you wouldn't sit next to somebody in a poverty country and sit there and say, you're starving when this person hasn't ate in like days. But you see words like this used and thrown around all the time, such as love, hate. Um, there's many different words out there that just get thrown around and we don't realize the impact of the words. Words do matter. Words can mean a lot. Now the last phrase I have to bring up is that you'll be okay. Coming from an anxiety standpoint, from someone that has panic attacks and I hear this constantly like, oh, you're gonna be okay. And from a depression standpoint, you're gonna be okay. Is at the time we are having a episode or we're feeling upset, we don't agree with you. So when you say that to someone who has depression or has a mental illness, that everything's gonna be okay, they don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Depending on the severity of the depression, they may never believe that anything is gonna be okay. Rather, what you should do is just kind of put yourself in their shoes. You know, think about how they're feeling. Think about the constant impending doom that they feel. They feel like they're trapped and they can't get out of a situation. You know, just try to relate to them rather than just, you know, oh, you'll be okay. Well, I definitely hope that you guys learned a little bit from this video. I know that these are some common phrases. If you have any more common phrases that you hear and you have a mental illness, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, whatever you have, please comment down below. I wanna hear common things that people say to you and that what bothers you the most. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I'll see you back next time.